if you don't like the quality of sex or the quantity of sex in your marriage, that's a problem. I figured out how to solve it. Men and women are not equal. We do nothing in our marriage 50-50. I make all the money, 100%. She takes care of the kids maybe 80% of the time. Dude, here I am on my second divorce. Just realized that she wasn't attracted to me anymore. Why? What I'm about ready to tell you is gonna sound crazy to your ears. It sounds just as crazy coming off my lips, but it happened to me, so I have to share it. I stopped showing up. I was a horrible parent. The third dial is what we call the producer dial. The fourth dial is the player dial. And then the last one is What's going on, Wealth Builders? Today, I've got an interesting guy on the show. Actually, he was the very first entrepreneur conference I ever went to. A lot of times I say Grant Cardone's 10X was. That was kind of like where I really opened my mind. But this was the first, and I'll talk a lot about that. But this guy also was a real estate guy. He is an ex-pastor. He is now helping men actually get more game so their wives want to have sex with them. You might you might not believe that, but it's actually a bigger problem than most people realize. I've got Keith Yaki. What's up, man? Oh, dude, it's an honor to be here, Ryan. Stoked. Thanks Anyone for who me. just heard that intro is probably like, wait, this guy, what, what's going on here? Yeah. Entrepreneur event, uh, yeah. ex-pastor, like what does he do now? Uh Married guys have problems having sex. Like, what's yeah. going on here? Sometimes you just fall into things and you you have a problem that you solve on your own. And then you realize when you solve it, other people go, I have that same problem. How did you fix it? Yeah. That's how I got into what I'm doing now. Helping married men. Yeah, dude. Get uh, game. You get in game. And I didn't realize it, but um, it's it's way more of a problem than a lot of dudes think. Yeah. Um, I If I was to look on the outside of your life, like you and I met, that was 2016 or 2017 is when the, I did at those At the end events. of 2017, I'll tell that story, but yeah, okay, end of so, 2017. So, so that's 17, we're at 2023. So that was six and a half years ago, six years ago or something like that. Call it roughly. Yeah. So I had just, Jesse had just come back a few months before I did that event. Your wife. My she wife. Had left My you. wife had left me. And... Um, I didn't understand that there was short-term attraction and long-term attraction. Mm. So before I met Jesse, short-term attraction was easy. I had had sex with hundreds of women. So I'm like, I know short-term attraction. Mm. I can get, I lived in Vegas, dude. I had some dough and I was single. So I'm <laughs> like, were like, I thought this guy's an ex-pastor. I was, but, but, that, I, but I like the honesty. That's 17 million years ago, but like just yeah. this last, last, um, last little bit. So before, I, so I went through a divorce with my first wife Okay. and I cheated on her. And I realized I wasn't a tractor in any way, shape or form, but rather than have like a backbone and a ball sack to go, Hey, this isn't going to work out. And I don't want to like break my integrity with you. I was too big of a pussy and I went and cheated on her. Mm. So I split my family up and put my kids through something that they shouldn't have been through. And I felt a lot of guilt and shame over that. So I tried to go prove myself to be worthy, went and had sex with beautiful women and realized that didn't make me worthy at all. And, uh, but I did learn a few things and I did learn how the female brain works and what makes them want to get naked with a dude. That part I understood. I met Jesse and I go, oh, we were at a Monday night football game. Believe it or not, we closed down the bar in Foxborough with two guys at, have you ever been to Foxborough? Foxborough? I have actually. So it's out in the middle of nowhere. Yep. And there's one hotel, the Renaissance right there, right next to it. Yep. I saw um, Aaron Rodgers play Tom Brady. Okay. So yep. I saw Tom Brady play some, whoever the guy was playing for the Chiefs at the time. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> yeah. knows. And uh, we closed down the bar with Mike Tirico and John Grudem. Oh, nice. Me and Jesse and them, and, and we, we, were, we had had a lot to drink, and uh, I had known Jesse maybe 10 days, and I said, I wasn't, I'm not looking for a girlfriend. I wasn't looking for a girlfriend, but when I, now that I've met you, you would be a girl I would want to actually be with. And she Why? Goes, oh, you're just, Why after 10 days? Dude, her, 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 her ability to like, like push back, you know, banter, flirt, like almost not care, but care. You know, she had game. She had a tremendous amount of game. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, this lady's got my intrigue. And then, um, yeah, we said, do you want to do it forever? Like we, we dated for a while. And I'm like, do you want to be like forever? My partner forever. And she's like, yeah, I want to do that. And then, you know, five and a half years into that, she literally, when we were moving into a beautiful home in Vegas, nice house. And, uh, she says, dude, I'm going to help you move in, but I'm not staying. Whoa. And I literally helped her and my daughter, who was two at the time, pack up the U-Haul and leave. And I was like, dude, here I am on my second divorce. And uh, it almost felt like I realized at that moment, I'm the problem. And through a couple of weeks, I realized, well, then that means I'm the solution. And I, and I started to go, okay, what do I know about what happened? What was it? And I just realized that she wasn't attracted to me anymore. Why? Because I had 
uh, I'll, I'll get into my five dials because I have like a very specific science. I didn't think about it back then, but now looking back and then actually breaking it down into frameworks of why I stopped showing up. I was a horrible parent. Like I had three other kids and, um, this kid, my wife's like, I don't even feel like I can go out on a ladies night. You're such a bad dad. I don't trust you with, don't trust with you our really. kid. Yeah. So she said, now that we've had one kid and you're such a bad dad, I do not want a second kid with you. Wow. That's what she told me. Yeah. Second thing was uh, our second dial is like a partner dial. So we got the parenting dial, we got the partnering dial and which I call kind of like the best friend dial. Mm -hmm. She's like, I, we never hang out. I'm not even a priority. You rather run your business. That's what she told me when she broke up with me. You run your business, you come home and talk about your business and you fall asleep on the couch. This is why the wealthy way was created by the way. Oh, beautiful. Because dude. most entrepreneurs yeah. are that way. Dude. And but here's the biggest punchline. That was like the biggest kick in the ding dong ever. And she said, I think my life would be better without you in it. Wow. And she wasn't wrong. How, like as a man, how like brutal is that to hear? It was the darkest time of my entire life. I went and did three chest days on a Monday and stayed at the gym for eight hours. I swam. I sat in the sauna. I did the steam room. I did a chest day. I went back, swam. I, I was just bawling the entire time. I didn't want to talk to anybody my whole life. I was like, dude, I got the greatest woman in the world, which I genuinely believed at the time, and I had no skills on what it meant to actually be a good dude. Mm. Long-term attraction. Short-term attraction, psh, I, that's, that's easy. But to keep a girl attracted to you, and I say attracted, it's not just like big biceps and abs. It's like, are they leaning in or are they repelled? And my wife was repelled. Mm. Yeah. So I just, I stopped showing up. The third dial is what we call the producer dial. I've been really good at that for a pretty good time. Like providing. Yeah, providing. I was like, okay. we were moving into a dream home. It was beautiful. Like we had everything. We had cool cars, like all that. And she's like, I don't actually give a shit about any of that. I mm. wanted you. You're not present. You're not here. And then the second two dials are actually the big ones that most guys really make a mistake on. The The, the fourth dial is the player dial, mm. which is I was no longer fun. I was no longer taking her on dates. I was no longer going dancing with her. Uh, and I like to quote the great American poet, Cindy Lauper, when she says, girls just want to have fun. Mm. And I was like, dude, I'm not even fun anymore. But if you were one of my friends, you'd be like, dude, Keith's one of the funnest guys in the world to hang around. We'd like, we laugh a lot. We have a good time. She's like, that's not the guy I know. Mm. So, and then the last one is, is the power dial, standing within your power. And what that basically dial stands for is do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it without fault. Mm. And I was so full of shit. It was just- That's just trust. It's total trust. And that's where we came up with the frame. When the trust goes down, the lust goes down. And when the trust goes up, the lust goes up. Mm. And people, you gain trust by people giving you a test. People test what they want to trust. You know, if I sat down on this couch and fell onto the floor and you're like, dude, hold on, there's a screw. I got to fix it. And then put it there. And you're like, try it now. I would be testing this thing before I trusted it again. Yeah. So- our wives are testing us all the time, consciously or subconsciously, to go, is this guy really the man or is he just doing things to get things from me? Right. Transactional. So, yes, it's all transactional. And what I discovered, because I had a problem before she left, I mean, a lot of things went away. Like, we weren't having sex as much. I felt like I wasn't wanted. And, and I was going to ask you that, like, did you notice the signs? At what point did it become? Because, like, I'm sure it wasn't a surprise when she said that. It kind of was, dude. Really? That's how Or were you that oblivious? I, I was that delusional. I was yeah. that oblivious. I was at, are you familiar with Mastermind Talks? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was at a Mastermind Talks with Gunderson, Martel, Vargas, we were having the best time and they're like, so how's things? I'm like, dude, I think it's going pretty good. Like I actually <laughs> thought- it, that oblivious. I was that oblivious, dude. <laughs> okay. I was that, but you know, a lot of the guys that come into married game, they go, dude, this feel like it came out of left field. I'm like, you're an idiot. Let me- let And me, so was I. Yeah. I'll tell you the biggest dumb thing I hear from men, entrepreneurs especially, is like, oh, well, dude, I'm out here working and grinding and building the business. Like they're focused on dial three mm -hmm. that you just said. Mm -hmm. And they're like, they should be grateful that yeah. I'm out here doing it. Yes. And I'm like, you're an idiot. That was me. Yeah. I, I we have all this. And she's like, but we don't have you. So yeah. I didn't want any of this. I wanted you. It's foolish. WealthCon's coming back to Vegas January 8th to the 11th. Now, if you've been to our events, you know how epic they are. We have the best time, not only with just great content, great speakers, but we have a lot of fun with the after parties and the masterminds and everything else. And number one, it's the, probably the best networking opportunity in the entire game. We have over a thousand investors and entrepreneurs 
at each one. And this will be no different. In fact, this is gonna be my favorite WealthCon ever. We've got some amazing speakers coming, people like Tim Tebow, Thatch Nguyen, Gabrielle Lyon, the list goes on. It is going to be an epic event and I wanna see you there. So if you're interested in attending, get your tickets now because they will not last. Go to wealthcon.org and get them today. Everyone knows that my favorite way to build wealth is through real estate investing. That's the reason that I started Wealthy Investor where we've trained thousands of students. But here's the thing. I've noticed that so many people fail to get started in real estate because they're worried about the money. They don't know where they're gonna get the money to buy a house or flip or handle their renovations and things like that. And so they just never get started. I wanna change that. And that's why I created a brand new free course that goes over five different ways that you could buy houses without using any of your own money today. And I'm gonna give you it completely for free. All you have to do is go to wealthyinvestor.com slash podcast. I've made it specifically for you. The moment you go to that link, you'll be able to go get access to it and learn how you can start buying houses today without any of your own money. And if you're somebody who already has a real estate business and who wants to scale, we wanna help you too. You can click the link below and book a free strategy call with our team if that's you. So when you dial all those five dials in, we call that a provocateur. So when mm. guys come into married game, their goal is to become a provocateur. And a provocateur is a man who provokes his wife to want him. Mm. So like we go, how many guys want sex? Every guy goes, raise their hand. I go, but there's something you want more than sex. And they're like, well, what is that? I said, you want to be wanted. Yeah. Because a lot of guys that come to us, they go, dude, it's like my wife will have sex with me, but it's kind of obligatory. Like she just is like, hey man, we got three minutes in the bachelor's on, hurry up. And like, that's that's not the movies I'm watching. Right. I want, I want her to act like the movies I'm watching. Yeah. You know, so it's like, well, if you want to be wanted, you have to be wantable. And you got to put in work. You have to, dude, it's, yeah, man. I was telling um, one of my guys this, I can't say where, but, um, you know, we were just talking about it and he's like working hard and he's got a newborn and so it's a different life. And I'm like, trust yeah. me, I know, I got a four month old, like, yeah. you know, trying to have sex uh, with the newborn ain't easy, yeah, right? exactly. And uh, I'm like, but even before that, right, it's like, you know, my wife doesn't owe me anything. Yeah. Right? Like, she should want to have sex with me. She should want to do things with me and spend time with me. She shouldn't feel obliged exactly. to do that, right? Yeah. Like, you didn't deserve anything because you brought home a paycheck. Exactly. Like, if you think that that's all it is, you are, like, literally stupid. It's I don't stupid. know, have any other way to say it. Dude, but we've been trained no other way. Mm -hmm. So, like, when guys come in, because this is... If, if, if a guy came to, if I went to somebody back when I was going through the struggles, here's the answers I heard. Do more around the house. Okay. More dishes, take out the trash, buy her more gifts. Uh, say yes more often. Happy wife, happy life. Have you heard any of these things? I think uh, they're kind of dumb too, they, but yeah. They don't work. <laughs> Every guy's tried them and they don't work. But here's the thing is the actions aren't wrong. It's the attitude behind the action. Mm. And it's actually even more than the attitude, it's the energy. So it's like what you just said, you're like, she doesn't owe me anything. So you're doing these things because that's your standard. Yeah. So we have a phrase in Mary Game where we say, her response does not dictate my standard. Correct. My standard, I'm going to take out the trash and do the dish and do this, whether she's here or not. That's what I do. That, but that's why I, I was going to say earlier, from look on the outside looking in, it doesn't appear that you probably ever had this problem. No. But I, there's some real clear signs why. You've always been in great shape. I've always been like, dude, Ryan's in great shape. Mm -hmm. You're athletic. You seem really thoughtful and intentional mm -hmm. walking through your building. is just evidence of that. Um, and so I, I would have never guessed that, that I'm not saying you have that problem. I'm saying I would have been like, oh no, I don't think that guy has that problem. Mm -hmm. Just from the outside looking in, you dress sharp. Dude, you're a suit model now. I saw your ad. <laughs> <I'm> like, oh, <laughs> he's a, Ryan's a suit model. That's amazing. So what happens is these guys are going, they come in like, dude, I've upped the chores. I've upped to this. I've upped to that. I go, oh, and she's now your mom. <laughs> Cause you're trying to get do you, approval. Do you want an allowance for it? Exactly. I go, you're trying to get cookie nookie or a gold star. And she's uh, like, dude, I don't know. I live in California now and moms don't want to have sex with their kids. <laughs> so, so we don't, so it's like, you've got to become the man that she from across the room goes, I'm so honored and lucky to be with that guy. Yeah. But means that you have to actually become him. Yes. yes. You can't, Talk about it. I was so full of shit and all talk that Jesse's like, you're, I, I can't, I don't trust anything you say. Yeah. Well, I think the biggest thing that you said is that you have to up your own personal standard. And the what I said was regardless of the outcome. Yeah. Right. So 
the things you mentioned about me, it's like, I have a standard for how I need to look. Yeah. You know, these people who are like, yeah, you know, I'm married now. Like who do I got to impress? Yeah. I'm like, you're a fool. Okay. Yeah. That's you. You just have low self-worth yeah. to think that. So um, number two, uh, well, you know, like, uh, I'm, I'm working here. I want to play with the boys and, and go out and golf and drink and yeah. all this other stuff. And my wife should stay home with the kids because I'm the provider. And I'm like, oh, geez. Well, now you're not only dumb, but you're just selfish. Yeah. That's number two. Um, and then number three is like, okay, okay, I am going to do these things, right? I'm going to go clean around the house. Well, that tells me three that you don't know even her love language. Yeah. She could probably care less that you clean around the house, right? Yeah. Unless her love language is acts of service, then, mm -hmm. you know, she don't care about that. My wife does not care about that. Yeah. You know, she does not get turned on when I take out the trash. Okay. Mm -hmm. But there are guys who think that because they yeah. just are oblivious to what their love language is. My yeah. wife doesn't care about gifts. Yeah. She doesn't care about even physical touch. Her, her love language is quality time, yeah. which just so happens to be the hardest thing for me to give. Yeah. Because time is like, if I could buy her gifts, I'd yeah. be like, boom, yeah. autopilot. Let's just map all this out every week and yep. just get them delivered. And then yep. I'd be like, I'm living it. That's but right. no, it's like, it's quality time. And so that God decided that that was the way it was going to be between us. And yep. so I have to be very intentional about date nights, about mm. the weekends, about when I come home from work, yeah. because if I'm bringing my work baggage and I'm on my phone and trust me, I ain't perfect. Right. Yeah. Like, no, none of us are, man. You know, She'll get on me, and I already know, like, if I did something, I'm like, yep, yeah. it ain't happening tonight, boys. <laughs> yeah, like, that is yeah. what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's, so you got a really good grasp of this. I didn't have any of this grasp at all. Mm -hmm. And um, and my message now into the marketplace is, if you felt these things, I can help. Yeah. If, you're, if, you, don't ha if you don't like the quality of sex or the quantity of sex in your marriage, that's a problem. I figured out how to solve it. And it's because I went through the deepest, darkest pain. I got a crazy story that I think you'll really like because I believe in God. I believe in a creator. Um, I may not, you know, follow the book or, or believe. I think all the books are trying to say the same thing. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, dude, I went on a mushroom trip. <laughs> Listen to this. This is where my theology comes from. <laughs> the mushroom yeah, theology? This, this is the wealthy way. This is the wealthy way. Okay. So I, I have a group of my buddies I hang out with and I go, why don't we go out to Joshua Tree and let's all do mushrooms? and have a good time. And all of them are like, we're in. So we go out there and have you ever been to Joshua Tree or like Palm Springs in that area? Yeah. The, the stars are like mm -hmm. next Island level. cabins in Big Bear. Okay, so the, when you see stars everywhere you look and and I mean, Jupiter was on fire. I mean, it was the, it was the, the performance. I was like, hold on, the best part of the show is coming in five minutes because every five minutes there was shooting stars, something going crazy out in the sky. And I was like, I feel like I met God. Mm. And I was like, all these books are trying to explain and describe wh whoever hung all these stars. Like God is so big and so majestic and so amazing that I don't even know if humans' words can even, like I understand why Jews don't say the word. Because it's like, how, how does a word even encapsulate this magnificent creator that made all of us? So I'm, I'm in awe of like tr truly whatever created all this and I call it God, um, but... I was not, I was not living, uh, I was not living in a way that, that I understood, Hey man, I was created to create. And I was also created to create this relationship with this woman where I am the example to where she's honored to be with me and would want to do anything I want because she knows it would bring me pleasure. Mm -hmm. That's a very different frame of how I used to see things. Mm -hmm. And my dad didn't teach it to me. I didn't learn it. I don't, I had to go through the hardest time ever. So here's the crazy story. You ready for the crazy story? Jesse moves back. She's six weeks back. She still has some of her boxes in the closet in that new house. And we're like kind of hugging and kind of kissing, but like super awkwardly. And we're working with a coach. And he goes, why don't you guys write down 10 things that you can appreciate about each other? Even though you're not really liking each other, what can you appreciate? Jesse could write one. Mm. And, and I go, okay, well, what is it? She goes, He's trying. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I was almost seven years ago. That's so trying. Right. Yeah. I'm like, well, we can work. Oh, we can work with that. If yeah, the guy's yeah. got, he's got, he's going to be here. We can work with that. That night we go to bed and I'm, I'm like in my feels going, I'm, this is her boxes are still there. 
We don't even like, there's nothing. What's going on? And her foot touches me while we were, while we were going to bed. And dude, instantly, man, I felt like a jolt go through me. I started sobbing and I felt God talk to me. This is where it gets crazy. And I, what I'm about ready to tell you is going to sound crazy to your ears. It sounds just as crazy coming off my lips, but it happened to me, so I have to share it. Mm -hmm. And I heard, not audibly, but like just whenever, I, however God speaks to you, that's how it felt to me. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm, you're going to help millions of men solve this problem that you're in the middle of. And dude, my first reaction was like, you clearly, this can't be right because I haven't solved anything. I haven't solved it. I'm in the middle of it. And this is the deepest, darkest pit I've ever been in my entire life. So the fact that here we are years later, having helped hundreds of dudes, and we have quite a big uh, following on our podcast it's just the most comical thing in the world to me that I figured this out and I'm just sharing it. And guys are like, well, that's so simple. I go, I know. <laughs> Here I am to, with the simple dummy math of how this actually works. Mm. That's how I see everything, man. Mm. How'd, so, you, how'd you even get her to come back after six weeks? Um, it took about five or six months, actually. No, she, when she was back for six weeks, that's oh. when I had that moment. No, it took like five or six months to get her back. Oh. A couple of things had had to happen. Number one, I hired three coaches. I, I'm probably like you, like, if I'm going to figure it out, let's hire somebody who's actually been through the thing, yeah. right? So I hired three coaches. I had a girl and two different guys. And frankly, if I'm being honest, didn't even believe they went through what I went through. But the, the psychology was so sound. I'm like, what do I got to lose? I'll try everything these people are saying. And the, the, the major principle I came up with that I realized through all of them was this. If you want to get her back, you have to move on. And if you want to move on, you have to move on. So I played sports growing up, not a lot of baseball, but I played a lot of football. And I'm like, you're telling me we have a one play playbook. <laughs> I can run that play. Yeah. So I literally realized if I'm the problem, I'm the solution. And Nobody likes somebody trying to be attractive to gain their attraction. People just like attractive people. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I need to become attractive for me. I need to set that standard for me. And like, no, I'm going to weigh this. I'm going to look like this. I'm going to do this with my business. I'm going to do this. So I set all those standards thinking she was not coming back. Mm. And then she was like, she, I it was at a 4th of July. I had a party, I had a bunch of people over guys and gals. And she goes, wow, you have a lot of people over. I'm like, I know. Right. And then she's like, what's going on? I'm like, just having a good time. How are you doing? How's your 4th of July? Oh, it sucks. The new guy I'm with. And I'm like, oh, he's not me. Is he? Because I had gained all my confidence back. I had gotten back in shape. Mm -hmm. I knew who I was. And if she wanted me back, cool. If not, I had moved on. Mm. And, uh, and then with a couple of weeks, we started getting back together and she didn't even actually think I was going to take her back. Mm. That's because what I realized was the number one rule of psychology is everybody wants what they cannot have. Mm. And so when I became this thing, which is the thing she initially fell in love with, and this is why every guy who comes in a married game, I go, you're already her type. You don't have to wonder if your type, she said yes to you. She said, I do, but you stopped doing attractive things or started doing unattractive things. Mm. And the, that chemical, like where she goes, I just got to be around you. It starts slowly draining out. Yeah. But if you start doing attractive things again for you, not for other show, and uh, you stop doing those, it, it becomes you. This is you, your standard. She starts feeling those feelings again. But what I've discovered is that sex is the fruit of a good marriage. Mm -hmm. It's the thing that natural, it's a natural byproduct of people that are really connected. Mm -hmm. So people are like, well, how do I get her to have more sex with me? I go, you're the problem. Mm. And I say it and almost all my marketing, everything you, guys are 95% the problem. Yeah. And if you are not the problem, then you settling with somebody who's not going to be a true like shotgun person. If you're driving and everybody's yanking on the wheel, you got to kick that person out. Mm. So we come up with the concept with leaving is the leverage. If you're not willing to leave, and I don't want divorce, I've been through, I've been through, uh, my kids went through it, I went through one. I think divorce is horrendous and horrible. But I also think a dude staying in a marriage where his wife's like, I'm not gonna have sex with you, I'm not gonna be nice to you, I'm not gonna serve you or love you, I don't care how good you are. It's like, well, how long would you stay in a cell phone contract if they said no more texting? Mm. You'd be like, no, that, that's not what we agreed to. Mm. 
So I got some interesting thoughts about this, but we really help shift the man to be like, I, if you really believe you are the catch of the county, your wife will show up like that. Yeah. So I've got a bunch of what thoughts. What are you hearing? Yeah, yeah. I want to hear. You're a smart dude, so I'm curious as to how you think about this stuff. Yeah. I mean, I'm just uh, listening to, I guess, your philosophy and, and you know, I'm thinking about my own life. Um, and obviously, I look at everything through the lens of the Bible, right? Mm-hmm. And so for me, when I just think about this idea of serving, you know, one of my most viral reels was me saying, men and women are not equal. And people are like, oh, that's a good hook. Yeah. And I was like, look, we do nothing in our marriage 50-50. There's literally nothing 50-50. Mm-hmm. I go, I make all the money, 100%. She takes care of the kids maybe 80% of the time. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I pick the restaurant. She doesn't like to pick. She picks everything literally in the house. I pick 0%, you know, yeah. like, yeah. and we're good. Nothing is 50-50. Mm. And I go, and here's the thing. So true. Like, I want to just serve her not for any kind of reward, not for recognition, just because I want to serve my wife as best as humanly possible because one, that's what the Bible says I'm supposed to do. And two, I just naturally want to because that's what the Holy Spirit is pushing me to do. Sure. Right? Yeah. And I go, and she doesn't have to give me anything. But naturally, what will happen when you do all of the right things? Like those things that you want probably will happen, right? Yeah. Um. But on top of that, I just basically said, like, the problem is when you get into a marriage where it starts becoming transactional or tit for tat yeah. of like, well, I'm doing this and you're not doing this and you're doing that. And, you know, we got to start getting equal. And like this, mar- it's like, no, dude, yeah, I don't want my marriage to be equal. Yeah. Because if I, I go into it with that mindset of that, I'm just going to like so outserve my wife. So good. Like dude. what's going to happen? Right. So that's how I perceive marriage. And that's what the Bible teaches with marriage. Yeah. And you know, even like Christian guys, right. They'll be like, well, the Bible says the wives need to submit. (laughs) And you're like, well, you, you missed like the other part right before that. Yeah. The the, setup. (laughs) Yeah. And the part right, right after that, like, yeah, yeah. You also need to love your wife and do the same. Like it's not just her. Lay your down, lay your life down like Christ did for For the the church. church. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Are you willing to die for her and do everything for her? Right. If you do those things, I'm pretty sure she's going to submit. And I'm pretty sure you're going to submit to her. Like yep. you're going to serve. Yeah. So anyways, I, uh, I just think about these things. Cause you know, if I'm talking to a Christian, mm-hmm. I can talk from this lens of this is what yeah. it is. If I'm talking to a non-Christian, well, all I can say is, Hey, this is what works for us. You yeah. may not believe the Bible, but yeah. I think the advice is going to work for you tremendously. If you're a Christian entrepreneur or somebody who's interested in growing in their faith, I would love to invite you to one of our wealthy kingdom Bible studies that's going on nationwide. If you have no idea what it is, we just started the community earlier this year and we now have 50 Bible studies already happening. And we also have virtual group meetings, we have different mission trips and all these other retreats and things happening every single month. And I would love for you to be a part of it. So if you want to learn more about joining the community, we are actually in the process of becoming an official nonprofit. And so I would love to see you there contributing and helping us grow in the mission. So go to wealthykingdom.com. You can learn more about it today. And I can't wait to see you on one of the calls or in one of the Bible studies. But what is interesting that you had me thinking about, and I've thought about this a lot is, okay, let's just say you are doing all the right things, like you mentioned, Mm -hmm. and you truly are married to somebody that's just not it. Yeah. Once again, I think everything from a biblical point of view, and you know, the Bible. Yeah. Um, it's like, all right, well, there are certain times divorce is allowed, mm-hmm. infidelity, non-believer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's just like very unique cases, yeah. right? Is divorce the first thing recommended? No. It's like, hey, yeah. like, let's pray. Let's, you know, hopefully my actions cause her yeah. to change and be saved and, For you sure. know, everything, right? Yeah. So that would be my thing of like, to that guy, like, hey, just because you you got it all figured out. Like, don't just be like, all right, well, finally, I'm the man again. I can go get whatever I want. Yeah. You know, it's like, no, nah, dude, like, you married her for a reason. The first, there was something yep. there initially. And maybe she was always that way. Maybe she became this way over time because you suck. You know, like, yeah, I don't know how it got there, right? But I would be praying for a miracle. And if 
not, you know, I, I have had this situation happen, like where guys are like, yeah, you know, we haven't had sex for years. You know, she doesn't believe anymore. She is doing this and that. And I'm like, dude, like, I, I can't relate. Like, I, I can't imagine if my wife was just like all of a sudden one day, like, yeah. I no longer want to do this. Yeah. I no longer believe. I no longer, you yeah. know. But then again, I also think I'm like, but would that ever happen? Not if you're the guy that you are. That's it, what I think. That, it, it, wait, and the guy that you are, because I, I, I have similar views about that what you're talking about. Like, um, even if Jesse and I are like, uh, I have a nine-year-old daughter, Jovi. And um, even if she tries, like she goes, I think we should do this. I go, and that's what a mom should say. But as a dad, mm -hmm. this is what I think. Because mm -hmm. Jovi doesn't have two moms. Yeah. Jovi has a mom and a dad. Yeah. And so I know you're going to think that what I'm saying might be a little harsh, mm -hmm. but for her to have a full rounded spectrum as a human, mm -hmm. she needs masculine energy in her life that can share with her and show her that you got to like one of our principles in our family is carry your own weight. Yeah. Like, don't leave your trash around. Don't, don't leave anything around. Like we shouldn't even know you're here. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like if you ate a piece of uh, food and plate, put it away. Yeah. So that concept of, I think that the family is that unit where we all go and go, that's what feminine looks like. That's what masculine looks like. That's what they look like together. So I hate divorce. I think it's horrible, but I also hate a man who is a really good dude and a woman who's like abusing him and be like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to honor you. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what do you do? Yeah. I've, um, it's, it's such a tough thing. No, it's man. a tough thing. A hundred percent. Especially if you're a believer, it's easy if you're a non-believer and you're just like, whatever. Yeah. Well, I think you say that, but I don't think it's as easy as you think for non-believers. Like ramification wise, like they may not have the, oh my God, God's going to be mad at me thing or the church is going to shun me. Cause that's what, what, what do you mean by difficult? I don't think either of that. Okay. Um, cause that's me. When I grew up as a Christian, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. So it was I think outward. Yeah. I think, um, if you're worried about the church shunning you, that's a totally different issue. Okay. <laughs> like, I agree. I think that's a, you know, that, that, that's a church problem. That's not a you problem. Yeah. I think the church should rally around, you know, people that are going through anything. Yeah. Right. Agreed. Um, and yeah, I think there are times God does get mad at you when you sin. I don't think God's happy. Mm. <laughs> you know, when you disobey yeah. and you aren't obedient, I don't think he's happy. Yeah. You know, and even like for you as a pastor and, you know, somebody who's like, still deciding what they believe, right? You know, you're like, yeah, I believe in God, but I don't know. Do I think he's happy with you? Personally, no. Yeah. But that's just what I believe. Yeah, no. I, and it I, is what it is. Yeah. So, I have so many Christian friends. Like all my best friends are like diehard Christians. Mm -hmm. Taylor Welch, diehard Christian. Pete yeah. Vargas, diehard Christian. Dan yeah. Martell, becoming a diehard Christian. Gary J. White got baptized, yeah. Christian. And then I'll be the fifth. Fifth. Dude, you guys are all deep hearted Christians. Yeah. Well, you know what's funny is, so I was talking- to, I love it. Yeah, well, what's funny is, so the first time, oh yeah, this is the story I was going to tell you about Dan. Okay. So, you know, Pete's a good buddy. Dan's become a good buddy. I just met Taylor. I haven't met Gary yet. But, um, you know, with Dan, he was trying to get on the show. Uh, this was whenever he was releasing the book. And I was like, I don't even know who this guy is. Like, whatever. And then like, I just didn't have him on. And then multiple people had reached out. And I was like, I don't know who this guy is. Like, he's just a tech guy. Like, whatever. Mm -hmm. So then finally Pete, um, group text us and Pete was like, Ryan, you're an idiot. Okay. Dan is a savage. He's the best. Just but like, have him on the show. Yeah. You're an idiot. And I was yeah. like, Hey Dan, what's up? Yeah. And you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right, sounds good. And, um, you know, whatever he came. Yeah. So then we hit it off. I was like, Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. I'm an idiot for, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. for not like even doing any research. Yeah. Right. And to be fair, I guess in my perspective, it like happens every week. Sure. Like it's just nonstop, like yeah. people wanting to go on. So I'm just like, oh, I never heard of him. Yeah. I yeah. don't, whatever, right? Totally get it. So anyways, Dan and I right after um, went to an event at Top Golf, And so I was like, oh, well, let's just go. So we're just driving and stuff. And then you came up because mm -hmm. during our uh, podcast and stuff, I think we started to talk a little bit about faith. And um, I don't even remember why you came up, but we, we were talking just like, um, that you were, oh, you were the reason he got into faith. That's what happened. He's like, yeah, this guy, <laughs> Keith Yaki, like I wasn't a believer, but you know, and he's like, and it's weird now because like we've switched. He's like, 
I'm like now a faith yeah. guy yeah. and I'm trying to get him. Yeah. And I was like, Keith, yeah, I have not talked to Keith. Yeah. But I, you know, and then it just brought me through this weird loop of, yeah. um, you know, there, there's whole other things I could talk about, but moral of the story is, um, you know, for me anyways, I don't think the church should be judgmental over somebody getting divorced Yeah, towards a gay couple towards whatever. Right. I think that you just speak truth and you show love and it's like, it is what it is. Yeah. Like, I don't believe that, you know, what you just said about, you know, Hey, this is what I believe God is. And I'm like, yeah, I believe God created this. And I believe yeah. that Jesus, yeah. you know, he's God and yeah. it is what it is. I love it. I, <laughs> I, I, my point in my faith right now is I love it. Not that I love it for you. Like, Oh, that's so cute. I go, yeah. No, like I know what I believe. Yeah. Like I'm, I've been meeting with God for three hours every Sunday for the last 48 months on uh, cannabis. Mm. I haven't missed that meeting. Nobody could, I, if Donald Trump called me and said, dude, I, I, I need your opinion on something. If it's from Sunday at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., not talking to you. Mm. And I have been so faithful to that. And I literally go there saying, I want to be, a, a phenomenal example of what our creator has sent man on earth to be like. So my like faith in my creator is deeper than it's ever been way deeper than ever when I was a pastor. And it's, and I, I'm so open to be like, I can tell that your faith and the Bible and Jesus means so much to you. And I, I love it. Mm -hmm. I think it's amazing. Like mm -hmm. that's why I have such good close Christian friends. And I know what Christians think about me. <laughs> So it's like, it's not, it's, heathen. it's no. not lost on me that they're like, this guy's a psychopath. And I go, and I love you too. Like I, <laughs> but I, it's, I used to, it used to be fake, but like for real now it's genuinely like, dude, that's amazing that you believe that. I think that's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Like Pete Vargas has, like, wasn't he one kind of the first to create this faith-based like mastermind? A lot of, I know there's a lot of people doing it now, but I felt like when he came out with it a year or two ago, he's like, it's kind of like the first Christian one I know of. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong? I, I don't hang on. Um, Maybe I don't know much about Christian math. <laughs> it's clearly I don't. <laughs> clearly. You're like, bro, I've been had one for four years. <laughs> I don't know. Do you have one? Um, so we do something a little different than Pete, but uh, yeah, Pete has the wellspring and uh, Pete spoke at my last event. Okay. Um, but before that, Pete had a virtual Bible study that I was a part of. This was like- You a, guys used to pray every yeah, yeah, Friday every or Monday, right? Or Monday. Yep. So yeah. Wasn't was like, Taylor a part of that? I, he might have been before me or after okay, me, but it. that was like two to three years ago. And okay. then eventually that led into what it ended up got becoming. Um, but yeah, I was just there like three weeks ago in Jacksonville with Pete yeah. and them. Um, what I have is called Wealthy Kingdom and it's very different in that Pete's is, um, I would say for like uh, high-end Christian businessmen mm -hmm. or not men, but any yeah. entrepreneur. What I started was for basically any entrepreneur, whether they're Christian or not, we're launching local Bible studies everywhere. Oh, cool. So we launched 50 this year. Dang, dude, that's yeah. amazing, man. So we have curriculum that the entire, you know, 50 are going through. We're all going through it week by week. Who created it? You? Um, I didn't create the curriculum. Well, I created the the organization. We're Got in it. the pro we're in the process of going nonprofit. It's called Wealthy Kingdom. Nice, man. But uh so we have a pastor on staff. His name is Matty Montgomery. He's got his own church in Tennessee. So nice. he creates the curriculum every eight weeks. Wow, dude. We all go through it. You know, we got a group. We got a Monday, you know, Zoom call. There's a whole bunch of things. That's incredible, man. Yeah. I, can, I think as humans, we're looking for connection more than anything. And we're looking for communities that we go, hey, I, I align with that. Yeah. You know, do I think anybody's going to hell? Probably not. But do I think that we should honor our word and probably live by the Ten Commandments? Yeah, I do. That's a great way of setting up a civilization mm. as far as I'm concerned. But you said something earlier that I thought was really key and I want to I want to circle back. You said my story is why you created the wealthy way. What did you mean by that? Or something happened like that. You go, this is why this was created. What yeah. did you mean? So for me, um I've been I've been fortunate enough to kind of like pick up on these things early in my life. You know, I'm 34 now, I've been married 10 years, three kids all under five, yeah, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. You're um, in that season, man. I'm in the season. season and people started to ask me when I got on social media, like, dude, like, how are you running all these businesses? And like, I see you serving at church. I see you on mission trips. You guys are doing your Bible studies. You're staying in shape, you know, your relationship with your wife, you guys are going on vacation and date nights. Yeah. Like how? And I was like, well, 
a good question. I'd never like systematically thought about it. It was just mm. kind of like a natural byproduct yeah. of the standard that I held for myself, yeah. right? So then I just started to formulate it. And I was like, if I was to like try and systematically help somebody do what I do, how would I do it? And so I just started mapping it out. And then I was like, man, this is actually really good. This could be like a new thing, a new coaching yeah. program and whatever, right? And then as I went through it, I was like, dude, no, everyone needs it. And so what I did was two years ago, I created a course and I was like, everyone can have it for free. There's no upsell. There's nothing. It was like five hours of, mm. of videos that I just created step by step of how to live the wealthy way. Yeah. And, um, you know, it ended up getting downloaded like 30,000 times in the first month. And I was like, dang, dude, people. And I just started to get message after him. Dude, this is like what I've been looking for. This Whoa. is crazy. There was no product. Yeah. And um, a year later, you know, I was like, this would be a good book. So I just had them create the, or take the course and turn the book. They're like, you know, you did that backwards, right? Yeah. <laughs> People usually get a book yeah. and make that's courses. I, that's what I did with my book. So I'm, I'm following your trial. Yeah. I did the course first and they just said, yeah, turn it into, it into the book. book. Yeah. And so, um, I like that way better. <laughs> that's what happened. And then it just became the brand because like, to me, it became so important for entrepreneurs to hear it. And mm. what started to really stick with me was I felt like there was this spiritual battle happening. Um, in the business world, especially on social media, where there are so many big influential people who are not Christian and who have very um, different ideologies mm. of how you should run your family and yeah. what's important and priorities. And I was like, dude, these guys are so wrong. Yeah. Um, but yet there's no one else that's telling them other information Hmm. you know, that has both influence and, uh, let's just say respect business wise yeah. where they'd be like, well, yeah, of course you can say that, but like, you're, that's why you're not successful. Yeah, over exactly. Here, right. Yeah. Yeah. You work at the sandwich shop. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm like, no, you can actually do it all. All right. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. And I will be the testimony yeah. to that. Right. Hmm. Um, and it just kind of like really dawned on me where it was, Somebody had asked me at one of my events, they're like, dude, the reason I come and, you know, we do stuff with you is because you're so bold about your faith. Mm -hmm. And they were like, who do you look up to is like a Christian entrepreneur? And at the time, I could not give them an answer. Mm. I thought about it and I said, who's like a really big influential Christian entrepreneur that's like out there day in and day out, living it I out. I can't even think of anybody right now. I couldn't either. And so I was like, it must be me. Like it, if, that. if not, if not me, then who? Yeah. That was the, that was the question I Dude, asked I myself. Love that. So it became this thing where I was like, all right, well, <laughs> that's a lot of responsibility, but we're going to do it. Yeah. And am I going to be criticized because I have guys like Keith Yaki on? It's a very different way to go reach the secular world yeah. because I came up in the secular world yeah. as a Christian. Totally fine. I, I have no judgment against any, like I've had, yeah the red pill guys. Yeah. It's funny because you're the first married guy that yeah. like is talking about yeah. getting girls. Yeah. I've had all the single guys yeah. who are big, yeah. you know, and I've interviewed them and they're like, dude, yeah. they told me uh, you wouldn't let us on the show. And I was like, who told you that? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Just cause you're, you're super conservative. And I'm like, I'll talk to anyone. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'll hear their view. I'll tell them my view. It's yeah. all good. Yeah. But, um, you know, as it went on, I was like, you know, there's a lot of great Christian businessmen, but uh, no one knows who they are, right? They're just like maybe old, successful they business guys. Hobby Lobby. <laughs> they own Hobby Lobby. They own Chick-fil-A. Like yeah. nobody knows who they are though. Yep. Then you have, let's just say, uh, the John Maxwell's and the Dave Ramsey's and these guys who started in the church world and they transitioned secular. Yeah. And I was like, who started over here, but decided to go over here? Mm. Not many. No. And so for me anyway, I can't think of any dude. It doesn't exist. And so that's why I was like, I'll do it. Cause that's just wow. what I feel called to do. Yeah, man. I, I, when Garrett became really Christian, like baptisms joined Wellspring, I went to Wellspring's first like pitch on the yacht down mm -hmm. in South California. And there were some big name influencers there that happened to be Christian. And, and Garrett got up and he, and Garrett's getting excited 
And some of the guys are like, man, this feels good to talk so I can actually talk about my faith in here where I can't otherwise. And Garrett blasted him. Oh, that's He's, what I would do too. He goes, I've been a Christian for two months and I'm talking about more than you guys. And you guys have been a Christians for years and you have way bigger platforms than me. W when are you going to wake up? Yeah. Like, and I was like, well done, John the Baptist. I, I like your attitude, dude. Here's another locust and honey, you know, adjust your uh, leather belt and your camel hair toga and uh, keep talking. Yeah. So it, so I respected Garrett. I respect you for somebody who says, this is what I believe. Like I have views on marriage and monogamy and all sorts of shit that people go, that's not right. That's not right. And I go, listen, I'm not trying to convince anybody of any of my views. I don't care if any of you believe them. <laughs> yeah. I genuinely don't. Yeah. But if you have this problem and you can't solve it and you've tried everything else, mm -hmm. I have a way that is so guaranteed that I tell somebody, if you do this work and it doesn't work, I'll give you the money back. Mm. I've had zero refund requests from people who've actually done the work. Mm. I had one guy actually ask for a, request, a refund. I said, no problem. I'm going to go back to our original coaching call. I want to make sure if I missed anything. Mm -hmm. And I was genuine in it. Can we watch it together? He said, no problem. Dude, we're five minutes into it. And he goes, stop. I go, what? He goes, I haven't done one thing you told me to do. There's no way I can ever ask for a refund. He goes, can I try it again? I said, sure, no problem. Dude, no shit. Within like 30 days, he's like, I actually did what he said. <laughs> I'm having sex two to three times a week. Mm -hmm. mm. So like, I don't think of myself as a relationship coach. I yeah, don't yeah. look at myself as a relationship guru. Nothing like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just a dude that said, I've tried everything. This works. Yeah. And it's probably going to ruffle some of your feathers, but if you're okay with that. So I, my, the boldness of how I talk about it, I respect that in you. Mm. I respect that in Garrett. I respect that in Pete. Yeah. Guys saying, I'm a believer. Yeah. I'm a believer in my shit too. Yeah. So I'm a believer. I know my stuff works and that's why I was excited to get on here. And I even had some of that. I'm like, I don't know if Ryan actually would even want to talk to me because he knows I'm kind of not as Christian as mm -hmm. my good buddies. <laughs> but regardless, mm -hmm. I believe in truth. I love truth. Like what's the truth? Not fantasy. What's the facts? Mm -hmm. Dude, if the facts are Jesus really rose from the grave, I'm the biggest fan. Yeah. Like if, if I knew that for a fact, and I know, you know, there's a lot of ways to prove that, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm just saying like your boldness in it, mad props, dude. Mm -hmm. That my biggest respect for you is because of that. Mm, I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, I, I knew you were successful at flipping real estate and I knew you were doing a bunch of stuff, but the fact that like, this is who I am. I was like, well, that's the boldest, bravest Christian I've seen online. I can't even think of another one right now. Mm, I appreciate that. Who, who? Taylor talks about Christians being not broke. He just started talking about that. That's the first time I've ever talked about him. People saying, Christians, you shouldn't be broke. You should be rich. He just started saying that? I, that, that I know of. Oh, he probably, uh, after our podcast, he's like, you know what? Yeah. Well, didn't he say it on your podcast? He's been saying it for like three or six months. Yeah. yeah. Who else talks about it? Mm-hmm. I can't think of anybody. Yeah. So some uh, relationship coach said, say, uh, are you a relationship coach? And I told him, I said, I'm not one of you. Mm. I'm a one of one. Yeah. I'm, I have a message that I believe God put on my heart that I'm sharing with men. And that is you've got to become the thing that you, that you, you think you deserve this. You don't. Yeah. You got a dad bod. You, 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 you smell like shit. You don't even shower and put cologne on. You never show up on time when you say you're going to. Yeah. My wife said, can you hang the painting in the hallway? And it took me three months. Yeah. That, what pathetic. a dodo bird. Yeah, it's pathetic. But this is what guys are doing, Ryan. It's funny though, because I've had, you know, I'm, I know you're familiar with like the red pill mm -hmm. guy stuff. Yeah. So like for them, I would say, who have I had? I've had, um. Justin Waller, Fresh and Fit, uh, Michael Sartain. Um, who have I had also? Sosnick with PBD. Um, the only guy I really haven't had is Tate, but I'm sure at some point that'll happen. Uh, he's, it was kind of hard to get him if he's in jail. Yeah. But uh, with all of those guys, you know, they, they all kind of say similar things, right? They're like, hey, dating right now is super hard for men. I don't agree with that. I, I didn't agree with it either. Okay. I was like, what do you mean? Well, you know, the apps and these girls, they're getting all these DMs and blah, blah, blah. I was like, well, why not just, you have the same tools as a man, just freaking step your game up. I don't get it. You would have more options too. Yeah. Like it's just, 
technology makes the cream rise to the top. That's yeah, what I said. I was I like, agreed. social media, the cream rises to the top. Everybody knows who the top guys are because the cream rises to the top. Yeah. You would know who the hottest girls are. You know who the hottest guys are. Like, it just amplifies the best. And it doesn't mean that the rest don't have a chance. It just yeah. means that, dude, the best can do whatever they want. That's what it means. Want. Yep, that's right. I agree with you. Yeah. I, did I, I, Can I clap? I mean, like, what are you doing here? <laughs> like, I, the, the guys, he goes, I asked a guy, I hadn't seen him in a while. I go, how are you? He goes, dude, dating is hard. I go, stop. He goes, what? I said, if I became single tomorrow, do you think that word, those words would ever leave my lips? He goes, no. I go, then why do you believe that's true? I said, dude, we have a concept in Mary Game called the catch of the county. Have I talked to you about it? No, 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 no. The catch of the county is this. I know, because we have a metric system. We have an app where you get your five dials every single day so you can know that I I showed up as a provocateur today. Mm. And so it's a daily, so it's married game, how to have game inside your marriage so your wife actually wants you. But we've also created a game out of it. So that way it's fun for us as dudes to play. It's an actual game. And so every day I'm trying to get my five points. Am I a good parent? Am I a good partner? Am I a good producer? Am I a good player? And am I standing in my power? Mm. And we, there's questions you can ask yourself. Like, for example, the standing in your power one is, did I do my personal development uh, hoping that my wife would notice? And did I get butt hurt if she didn't? Because mm. then you're doing it for the wrong reason. Yep. Uh, am I, do I edit and audit my shine for fear of upsetting the apple cart? Meaning I love short shorts. <laughs> I wear them all the time. I got beautiful legs. I yeah. wear them all the time. And my wife's like not the biggest I'm fan dis- of them. I'm disappointed you didn't wear them today. I know, bro. I know. But I'm like, okay, so I won't go on a date night with them. I can appreciate that. Mm-hmm. You, okay, we're not going to go into swanky Laguna, wherever, <laughs> with short shorts. My, my boy Andy Elliott loves his short shorts too. And he looks amazing. Yeah. You know, you got legs like that. You look like that. Wear them. Yep. But I wasn't like, oh, you don't like them? I'm not going to wear them. I'm like, I look amazing. I'm an athlete. I consider myself an athlete. I do cold plunges. I run. I train. Gosh, we got, you're a cold plunger too, huh? I've been doing it for three years. Oh, okay. So you're not one of these new, you know, wannabe cold plungers. I do. Listen, I don't, listen, I, I, <laughs> listen two and a half years ago, it's I, two and a half years is the real, actually the real truth. A buddy of mine, I said, when does everybody in the world sleep in They're like Saturday morning? I go, perfect. Why don't you and I do the hardest thing in the entire week, Saturday morning? Meet at my house at 5 a.m. We'll go running. Neither of us are runners. I said, and then we'll cold plunge. And, and then we'll finish it off with a, uh, with a jacuzzi. And we called it baptizing our bitch voice. <laughs> we figured if everybody else is sleeping in, let's be the guys that do the opposite. I, I look at this world and go, I want to be the exact opposite of this world. Mm-hmm. Fat, slovenly, disrespectful. Like, what a shame. What a shame they are showing up as to their creator. Mm-hmm. Like if our creator gave us, I want to look like this is how, like I want to look like the front of the box. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want the puzzle to come together. Like that's what the box said. And I'll give you the biblical view of that here in a second. Okay. I want to hear that. So, um, what I, all I was trying to say was, is these, when you do these five points, when you ask yourself, did I edit out at my shine? When a woman goes, oh, you're changing your answer. So where the red pill is right, it's like, don't change your answer for a woman. Know what your answer is and 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 be open to a conversation, but you don't have to be defensive or I'm yeah, not yeah. trying to convince you. It's just, that's what I believe. Oh, you don't believe that? That's crazy. Tell me why. Yeah. Well, a lot of guys will change their opinion so their wife will give them a little crumb of sex. And it's like, that is the most unattractive thing in the world. So I'm just calling out the things that we all believe regardless of faith yeah. and go, that's not a manly character trait. Yeah. Dude, what are you doing? So, anyhow. I wonder, too, you know, if it's... And once again, it goes back to this whole red pill thing of hyper-masculinity. is like, because the world before um, started to go so, like, I guess, anti-masculinity, mm-hmm. um, hey, let's, you know, empower women. Let's, you know, whatever was going on before. Yeah. That, you know, guys like Andrew Tate and everything came along. It was like, whoa, 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 whoa. First off, that doesn't work. Yeah. Right? No woman wants that, first yeah. off, number yeah. one. That's number, the first truth. <laughs> that's the truth. first truth. Yeah. No woman wants a woman, yeah. like, unless you're gay. But yeah. no woman wants a womanly man yeah. if you're straight. Yeah. And, you know, second thing is, like, you as a man, like, good luck with the relationship if you're, like, being emasculated every day. Yeah. Like, that don't work. And I've seen, that's a big problem I've seen with both Christian and non-Christian marriages when the woman tries to, you know, basically be the boss, emasculate the man. Oh, man. And it's it's brutal, dude. It is, that is, 
It doesn't work biologically. It doesn't work spiritually. It just does not work. Your ball sack is not supposed to be on a shelf. <laughs> it's supposed to be between your legs. And that, so the, the hyper alpha masculization, I think is falling short too. Mm. Because I think a real alpha, like what does a great boss do? Does he come in and go, guys, this is what we're doing. Let's go. Or does he come around and goes, hey, we have a problem to solve. What do you guys think? Let's come together as a team and figure this out. Which is more alpha? The second one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when my wife comes, I was at a dinner with a friend of ours and I, I, we went and saw Joe Rogan in Austin. We had like front row seats because we know Tony, his like best friend, Tony Clinchev. Have you had him on the show? Mm -mm. He's hilarious, dude. Okay. You want to talk about a, a nutball? He would be <laughs> okay. an interesting character on this show. Okay. Um, we go there. I'm watching Joe Rogan. He's getting to the punchline. He goes, I don't have a punchline for that one. And we're laughing because he's trying stuff out. And I'm thinking, this is the top of the game guy doing his thing. And I'm watching this and I'm like, Dude, my friend goes, oh, Joe Rogan's an idiot. And I go, tell me more. Tell me why. And then her husband and her husband goes, no, 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 but you listen to him. Why do you? And he starts to create an argument. And I go, hey, calm down. Let's be curious. You can argue with your wife later. I want to have an actual discussion with her. Yeah, he goes, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, good point. Like the alpha, that's not right. This is right. Eh. Yeah. It's like, dude, no. you actually sound like an idiot. Yeah. How about show up with a touch of curiosity and go, well, tell me why mm -hmm. in your almighty wisdom, why Joe Rogan's an idiot. I would yeah. love to hear. Maybe <laughs> you're right. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm watching a dude reshape an entire culture single-handedly. Mm -hmm. And so I'm kind of curious. Dude, he was into tattoos before everybody. He was into psilocybin before everybody. He was into pool before everybody. He was into jujitsu before everybody. He was into podcasting before everybody. This is a dude that, has really shaped our American culture in a major way. Mm -hmm. But please tell me how he's an idiot because I'd love to learn. Mm -hmm. So I think a real alpha is a very curious one mm -hmm. that wants to know all the data. So he's making a decision that actually benefits everybody involved rather than puts everybody in harm's way. Mm. So those are my- So you think that these hyper-masculine guys are too just, they're, they're not listening, they're not curious, they think they got all the answers and they're trying to just be ultra dominant it appears that way. Yeah. Without, no, I don't know yeah, yeah, Wall yeah. or any of these guys individually, but, um, and I think they're all doing what, I th I think anybody trying to promote masculinity is on the right side. <laughs> yeah. I really do. And so the, the, the views that they have, um, but I've been around a lot of alpha types and I'm like, I can do that once and I would prefer not to be at an around because like you can't have a conversation with them. They're yeah, always you, right. You know what I think is that what you're describing is the biblical definition of meekness. Yeah. Of that, you know, meekness isn't weakness. It's power under control. Yeah. So like a true alpha does not need to, you know, display their power. No. They, they choose when they want to let it go and when it's needed, yeah. you know, and everything else is like, but, but, but you know, yeah. you're like, dude, that dude could... He could do anything if he wanted to, yeah. but he chooses not to. That's true power. You ever been around a real lion, like like up close, like within three to six feet of a real lion? Even at a zoo. Of a, yeah. But was it glass or like a cage that you could? Uh, I can't even remember. I've well, been so, to a lot of zoos. Okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> we, I went and took my kids in Montana because a lot of the lions and tigers and stuff you see in movies, they, they are like someone's animal that they have trained to be that, you know? So if they're like, we're being chased, like Revenant, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, Dealing with a bear, that's a trained bear that knows how to do all those moves. Yeah, yeah. And it's all, it's not hungry, so he's not going to mess them up, yeah. right? Well, we went up to the, one of these ranches in Montana. They had the bobcat. They had the tiger. They had the lion. And this lion's toy was a bowling ball. And it had like an old like jail. like So his paw could come out. So they go, don't get within three feet. He could pull you in. Right. And there's this, you, we're this close away, like just out of paw's reach. And- you can hear a little bit of the rumble and you can just see the muscles. And you're like, that animal, if this gate's gone, he's killing me. I'm done. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't have any chance. That to me is what a powerful man is. Yeah. That's an alpha that says we can swap numbers if we want, but this isn't a business meeting. So I don't really care how much money you make. Yeah. You're kind of a douchebag. Yep. I would rather not hang out with you. Mm -hmm. that's I'm making my assessments off of character and how much fun am I going to have with a human being? Mm -hmm. We all make a bunch of money. Okay. Now what, what do you want to do now? Mm -hmm. So to me, I think that's the, the, the concept of is 
Well, who would you want to be stuck in Ikea with overnight? Well, you know what's interesting is, you know, you talked about the five things you need to do. Yeah, we call them five dials. Your five dials. And what I have realized is, you know, when you think about the uh, dials of, let's just say, being an alpha, Mm -hmm. having confidence, I think that there are some similar dials, right? I think there's, let's just say, you know, what makes a man attractive? Like a lot of these guys think, all right, well, yeah, your, your, your producer aspect, right? Money's one aspect, how you look, obviously another aspect, your, your game, how you carry yourself, all that stuff matters. Um, your beliefs, right? Like your conviction in your beliefs is a trait that people, you know, whether you agree or not. Right. Yeah. Um, and I'm just thinking through like, all of these things dictate, you know, how I even perceive people, right? And I guess, like, your status overall would would play a role, too, because I've had a lot of, um, okay, let's just take, for example, right? Because there's just this blend of all of them, right? There's okay. no, like, this one's better than this. It's yeah. just like, all right, like, if there was a total score, what would it be, yeah. right? What, what's your NBA 2K rating Right, right, right. with all of it? Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I meet a lot of people who are way more successful than me in business, but they don't have a following or something, right? Mm-hmm. And they know they can't buy influence. Yeah. Like, it can only be earned yeah. through hard work. You can't buy a six-pack. Yeah. It can only be earned through hard work. You can get rich, you know, like, in different ways. Yeah. But genetically... Those types of things are tough. Yeah. You can't, you know, faith is something that only happens yeah. with intentionality and time. So I think there's something to things that cannot be bought. Yeah. That people, if you're if you're trying to have confidence that like money is just so easy and transactional yep. to get. It's like Yeah. Oh, you, you have could more, luck into it. Yeah, like you have more money, like whatever. It doesn't Yeah. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Like I'd never even ever compare myself to anybody money wise. Like yeah. if Elon Musk were sitting here, I would not be starstruck or yep. it would just be, all right, dude. So like, let's talk about what's happening here. Like, yeah, I would want to know how, why, how, how do you think to become the richest man on the earth? How is, what, what do you think through? Yeah. Cause maybe I need some change in my thinking, mm-hmm. but like you having a bunch of money doesn't help me unless I figure out how you think properly. Mm-hmm. Or how about all the rich people that some of us have met rich people and you're like, that guy's a total dickhead. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to be around that guy at all. Yeah. No, his, his life's yeah. miserable. He's whatever, right? Yeah. I, I, I like people that have actually put some thought into what they really believe and they don't just parrot it. Mm. Like, I've put a lot of thought into what makes the male and female dynamic work and what it doesn't because I've ran into a lot of issues with it with my wife. Mm-hmm. We have had a coach for the last seven years that we meet with once and sometimes twice a week. Let's talk about that. So okay. as the expert on this and, you know, going through it, having the experience, having the system, how often do you fall short? All the time. Yeah, I get my dials. I do my dials every day, but um, I'm a human being just like Jesse is. And she says shit that bothers me. Mm. And I'm like, man, that is my least favorite part of you. And that's what our coach taught us to say is like that, that just recognize that's the least favorite part of that person. You're never going to like it. Mm. But what about all the other great stuff that they have? Right. So when Jesse, Jesse is an Enneagram six, do you know much about the Enneagram? No. Okay. It's the, it's the, there's all these different personality tests, but the Enneagram saved our marriage. Mm. I'm an Enneagram seven. She's an Enneagram six. I'm an enthusiast, which means I want to party. I want to have a good time and I want to have as much fun as we possibly can have. Super she, extroverted. Totally extrovert. They call me the enthusiast because everything's, oh my God, this is the greatest. Dude, your studio is the greatest. I love this. Everything's <laughs> the greatest, right? And I want to get hyped. I'm, 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 I, and, and I, I genuinely mean it. It's yeah, not, yeah. this is like, I'm loving this. Let's go. She's a six, which means she's totally into planning. Mm. Doesn't really like spontaneity. Doesn't like, like everything's got to be in its place and it comes across as controlling. Mm. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. You don't tell me what jeans to wear. Like when, when yeah. where, where did you read that in a manual that a guy loves that? That's like, no guy loves that. So, um, I will butt up against that. And I realize it's my ego. I guess where it's tough, right? 
and even I have to deal with this, but like um, when you're the one teaching something, right? People expect you to be the high standard, the, the standard, yeah. you know, and to be perfect. Like, you know, pastors struggle with this, yeah, right? And that's why there's so much, um, you know, hidden things with pastors because it's just like, dude, if, if the, I have so much responsibility, I'll let so many people down if yeah. I fail and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Same is true even with me. It's like, look, I'm over here telling people exactly what I believe, how I do it, all this stuff. But what if, I don't know, there was some story to come out that, oh, dude, Ryan cheated on his wife. Mm -hmm. Like how many people would be yeah. let down? How invalidated sure. would everything I said to this point be, even though it's still true, yep. right? And so it's like, man, I do need to hold myself to an yeah. even higher standard. Than I feel that way too. That, yeah, so that's why I was asking you about you know, that. Like he said in James, like teachers, we hold you should hold, you know you're you're more accountable because mm -hmm. you taught this stuff. Yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah, and I, I, I have not met yet a couple that I go I would trade spots with them. Mm. That's just my personal opinion. I've only yeah. met, <laughs> I've not met all eight billion people. So clearly, <laughs> this isn't a huge cross section. But of the couples of everybody I've met, I go I wouldn't trade spots. I wouldn't trade spots. I wouldn't trade spots. But if I did. I would be the most white belt mentality human being ever. I'm like, how did you do that? Mm. So I have not met a couple and go, I wonder how they do that. I go, oh, I know what he's doing. That guy's put a lot of deposits into his relationship. He can ask for any, any withdrawal he wants. Mm. So I just, I think of it in that way. I am exceedingly honest on my podcast and in my coaching group. And mm. Jesse and I have had arguments on our podcast about stuff we believe. The podcast is you two speaking? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I have some solo episodes and I, I have a guest on all the time too, but- What's the podcast uh, called just so people It's know? called The Married Game Podcast. Okay, got it. And we talk about our dials, but we talk about a lot of the shit that we've been through. Right. And we go, okay, what about this? And I go, oh, I hate it when you do that. Mm. I, ha I will always hate it when you do that. And I also recognize that that's how you see things as right. For some reason in your makeup, you doing that makes you feel comfortable. For some reason in my makeup, I can be as spontaneous. I can pack one pair of clothes and go somewhere and have the greatest time and not even think about it. So how do you solve it? I, I just be honest. I'll tell you how I solve it. Okay. Which, solve what? What are we solving? Um, the things that you don't like that cannot change. Oh, got it. Because that's okay. kind of what you're describing. Yeah, hey, right? yeah, exactly what I'm describing. Yeah. I, I wanted to make sure that I... I I don't tell people that I'm something I'm not. Yeah. I think I'm an example of what it means to be a provocateur. And I also eat shit. <laughs> and I tell, I, yeah. I'll get on the call. I'll go, guys, I'm really pissed off at Jesse right now. Let me tell you why. Yeah. And here's where my ego is going crazy. Oh, and I do the same thing with real estate. I'm like, guys, I lost a couple million on bad deals. Yep. It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Here's yeah. what I'm doing. But, but, to fix that, it. but that transparency is yeah, like, yeah. oh, dude, said no real estate guru ever. Yeah. But you said it, so we, and and I think that engenders trust. Yeah, well, it should. Because you go, oh, you're human. Yeah. Well, yeah. and then like, what else would you hide? Like, there's not. Yeah. So I don't hide anything. Oh, can I just say yeah, one yeah. thing? I, I don't mean to interrupt you. I get so excited. I learned. You must this be from, an enthusiast. I am an enthusiast. Yes. Yeah, okay. Dude, Garrett taught me this. He said the man who the most powerful man in the room is the one that has nothing to hide. Yep, I agree. And so I was like, I. I'm an open book. You can ask me any question about anything you want. And I'm going to tell you the straight up truth, even if it makes me look ridiculous. Yeah. Because I am ridiculous. Yeah. I was, um, you know, in business, you get through lawsuits and threats and different things. And I remember uh, on one, I was, you know, I was just going back and forth with the lawyer. And I was like, dude, because their biggest threat was, we're going to expose you and this and that. I was like, what are you talking about? I expose myself. You yeah. can't. Your threat means nothing to me. Yeah. And it took away all the power of that. And it was like, good luck. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. And also too, who has a bigger microphone, even if yeah. you try to. Good luck. Yeah. That's so powerful. And then it was done. Yeah. But you know, with uh back to the things we can't change. The things we can't change about our spouse. Um my wife and I have realized this a long time ago, because there would be things that uh, you know, we okay, so 10 years of marriage so okay. far. Um, apparently we've made it, you know, once you're after year 10, yeah. things should be pretty good from what I'm told. But, you know, she's very different today than she was For sure. 10 years ago. Like yeah. we're both very different. Yeah. So how do we keep aligned and growing together? Well, obviously for me anyways, I believe that we both have 
the same source of faith and that we're both striving towards the same thing. So that's what keeps us on the same path. I think it becomes tough when, you know, maybe her priorities, oh, well, I want to, like, this is what's important to me. And then you say this was, that's how you drift apart. But yeah. when you're constantly headed towards the same source, I think that that's the number one way. Yeah. Even despite years and years and decades that will keep you together. But nonetheless, um, my wife would always get mad at me for certain things, right? Like, One would be, okay, like stupid, simple ones when we first got married. Okay. Leaving the toilet seat up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Did, you know, you're a bachelor. You don't even know. You're like, yeah. oh, I didn't even know I did that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And so probably after a year of marriage and her like yelling at me enough times, yeah. I was like, okay, I need to like fix myself and just right. do this. And in my mind, I could have been like, but this is not, this is such a stupid yeah. small thing, but I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it. So, you know, you do something simple like that, that yep. you can control about yourself to make your spouse happy. Right. Then there are things that your spouse does that you can ask, like, if it's that important to you, you're like, Hey, this is like something that you need to change. That's a non-negotiable. Like yeah. there are those moments. Yeah. But then there are things that are stupid and small that, yeah, they may annoy you, but can you just like learn to reframe your mind yeah. where you don't even see it anymore? Yes. Let me think of an example. Um, so my wife, man, maybe, hopefully she don't listen to this one. So <laughs> my, my the, wife, the dish. she's very, um, she's clean, but she's messy. So what I mean by that is we're the opposite. I'm I'm, or no, I would be, okay, she's clean, but she's messy, meaning that she vacuums, she does all these things, she likes wiping it down, she like does not like dirtiness, mm -hmm. but she's perfectly fine, like, you know, if clothes are just hanging around, or like her car has just stuff in like it. and clutter, you mean? Yeah, clutter, yeah. messiness, mm. whereas I'm the opposite. There's no clutter. I'm like, dude, get rid of that. I don't want crap on my desk. Yeah. But if my desk has like cheese on it, I don't care. I'm just like, yeah, I'm, she would call me nasty, yeah, but I'm not messy, yeah. if that makes sense. And so like I would, I used to get mad because I'm like, how many times do I got to like pick up your cup, you know, because I, I, I bring her water every night. I get us both water before we go to bed. And like, you know, if I don't pick up the cup on her nightstand, there will literally be like five cups. And oh I've God. done it yeah. back in my youth. To prove a point. Yeah. And I'll be like, do you see how many cups are on your nightstand? This doesn't bother you one bit. This is like a week straight. You have seven cups. Yeah. <laughs> You've never touched them. It like drives me crazy. I'm like, how? <laughs> and I'm just like. That's so good, dude. But what, what's the point of me like getting yeah. mad at her and like, yeah. or I can change me and just go pick up the cup for her when I pick up my cup. Like what's, yeah. who's the idiot? Yeah. Me. Because I'm letting That's a that, great reframe. Right? Such a good reframe. And so I think there are things that um, our spouse does that you can just start ignoring and either fix yourself yeah. and just serve better. Yeah. And then it, be, it no longer annoys you. And it's yeah. like, I'm not asking her to change something that's so small yeah. in the grand scheme of it, right? Because yeah. we let the little stupid things so stupid. annoy us more. Yeah. Now, if we're talking about something like emasculating and not respecting, those are big issues. Big issues, yeah. Where you're like, hey- no. Yeah. Like we, we really got to talk about this, <laughs> Yes. but like we let these little things cause that to happen. Yes. Dude, you, you, you're nailing it. You're absolutely nailing it. And one of the things that I want to say, cause you, you're like, I, we made it at 10 years. I can tell you this. I'm 12 years in now. We just celebrated our 12 anniversary mm -hmm. and we have a saying that I, I say a lot on the podcast and whatever I go, honeymoon sex is for minor leaguers. Mm. And so soul sex gets better with age. Mm. On my 12th anniversary, my wife and I had the best sex of our entire life, of my entire life. And mm. I've had sex with lots of women. So I was like, this, what, it keeps getting better. My top 10 chart is all <laughs> Jesse now. Perfect. All Jesse. And dude, like a month ago, I'm like, dude, that was a top three. And then our 12th anniversary, I'm like, that's the one. Like, that's the one. And I'm always telling her this because I'm like, it's actually getting better because both of us are now so open with each other. Yeah. We keep, I call it the blue flame. I, I want to get to the blue flame truth of what's really going on. Mm. I want to get to the blue frame. I, it's going to hurt my feelings for you to say some of this stuff. Yeah. But I want you to know 
that I can't see the kick me sign on my back. Yeah. And I'm actually trusting you to tell me some mm-hmm. of these things. And I know it's going to hurt my feelings, but I'm cool with it. Yeah. Because if I'm doing something that's causing you to not want to open yourself up to me. Yeah. I'm the idiot. Yeah. And I need your help because I don't, I don't speak your love language. Your love language is acts of service and quality time. That's some horse shit, dude. <laughs> I need physical touch and words of affirmation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I go, I'm the exact opposite, but I go, all right, but aren't you called to be the resident language expert in her love language? Yeah. Shouldn't you know every little dialect? Like, this is your person, dude. So I, <laughs> I say, I just the big punchline is this, dude. It's the dude's fault for not creating an environment and creating himself into the type of person that his wife's like, I want to be with that man. Yeah. No, I... That's the one thousand percent agree. And you know, the thing I'll say too is like we've been saying, you know, at, at year 10, it's so different than year one. We got three kids. Careers are way different, right? Yeah. And I could talk about all the great things I love about my wife. They so far, I'm talking about cups on a nightstand. Yeah. Like how ridiculous is that? Yet yeah. it causes so much anger for people, right? When they just let it fester up. And like, I'll tell you, um, my wife and I, we probably went through our roughest patch maybe a year ago. Mm. So like, we've never even once talked about divorce. We've never had a therapist. We've never done any of these things. Yeah. But um, I was going through my roughest time ever in business. Mm. And you know, just all these negative things are happening all at once. I had to shut company down. The real estate market's trash all these just all piling on at once. Mm. And so I was spending way more time at work than I ever had in my career. Mm. And so I'm at home, like I was still coming home at five o'clock, but I'm like just putting out fires, you know? Yeah. And she's like, this isn't like, you know, what we signed up for. This isn't like the life and how we've gotten here. I was like, you know, in my head, maybe I'm trying to protect her. Maybe I just don't want to talk about it, you know, whatever, right? But I'm just like, do you think let's just take for a second that I would be doing all this. Like if I wanted to, you know, you've seen me the last nine years, not do this. Do you think that there's maybe a reason why I am doing this all of a sudden? Mm. This isn't like some ambition thing to try and grow to the next. This is like stopping the fires and keeping everything going. And I was like, it's so different than what you're maybe thinking. And you know, that's like the, in my mind, me talking to myself of like, yeah, you just have no idea. But then it dawned on me. I'm like, she does have no idea. How is she supposed to interpret what's happening if she doesn't know? Mm. And so Ooh, that's good. It, it, it ended up being this thing where, you know, we sat down and had a very serious conversation that probably like how you would do a therapist, but we just self did it. Mm. And we just started writing down kind of like what you did. Hey, what are the things right now that are annoying me about you and vice versa, right? Yeah. What are the things you love? You know, what are the things you want to see more of? What do you want to see less of? Mm. I just naturally just wrote them out. Yeah. Um, Cause I've been through so many like team building things and yeah. all that. And so like we both uncovered things that we both wanted to see. Mm. And um, by just communicating better. Yeah about just like this new thing that was going, because there will be the next new thing yeah. that if I don't properly tell her, she doesn't tell me what's going on with her and she just keeps it inside and I keep yeah. it inside. That's how bad, you know, things start. Yeah. So, you know, my biggest advice for people is like, communicate better, number one. Um, you know, number two, you know, if there's things that are in your control to change, just yeah. do it yourself. Don't yeah. even pick up the glass yeah. You know, get yourself in shape, start serving, take out the trash, yeah. do all of those things. Don't even tell anyone you're going to do them. Yeah. Just do them. And yeah. don't, don't look for praise of like, man, remember how you had that glass there? Yeah. Like, no, you just yeah. do it. And whatever happens, happens. I, I like it, man. Yeah. I like it. There's a concept that we uh, came up with recently. It's called the relationship recipe. Mm. And I was like, imagine if your wife wrote, wrote down everything she wanted to happen in a day to make her feel like the most loved, seen, heard, and understood her, human being on planet Earth, would that be helpful? And mm. every guy would be like, well, yeah, you mean a checklist? <laughs> yeah, that's, I, that would be perfect. And, uh, and I go, wouldn't you love to give her your recipe? 
and tell her what you would want every single day? Literally what we did. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. That was literally it. Yeah. Like I, I, I want in my perfect world, I would love this. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm your partner. Like me and Jesse, we talk about, we want to fill each other's sexual fantasies. And a lot of people are like their sphincter tightens up when I say that. Like, oh my God. It's like, well, who else would I be talking about my sexual fantasies with? It's my wife. Like, mm -hmm. that's the person who's going to do it with me. Like, you know, like, yeah. so it's not a topic that a lot of people talk about. Mm -hmm. not, a top, not a topic that when they go to their pastor, their pastor, they have some verses, like lay your life down for Christ, like the church. And I, and I love, the, I, dude, I love the Bible. I love its verses. I love all the stuff. But when it comes down to it, most men have forgotten how to actually be a man that's so worthy of actually a woman coming in and saying, you know how to treat me right. Mm -hmm. You are a servant. I, I think servant leadership is the only way to lead, man. Yes. It's the, by example, is the only way to lead. Uh, leadership is influence. You want to influence your wife. I asked my wife, if I was to ask you to go down any path of pleasure I wanted to go down, would you go with me? She goes, 100%, because I trust you. Mm. Dude, that sounds, that sounds like a guy that's put in a lot of work to go, you're safe with me. I would never put you in harm's way. I would never want you to do something that ever made you feel awkward, icky, or weird. I would never want to do that because you're my best friend. And like that's the when, with 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 all the bombastic like all we talk about is sex and Mary gang because that's the thing that gets that's the hook yeah the hook is I'm not getting laid every man knows that yeah yeah you're but, like you gotta serve they're like uh yeah but I'm doing that I took out the trash I don't want to be an example it's like and you don't get the reward man mm. so like that's the big punchline is just become the most attractive version of you for you yeah and become the standard and then start to ask for what you actually want. Well, communicate, right? Yeah. And I think- um, But a lot of people are really afraid. That relationship recipe, a lot of guys are like, I had a hard time writing down what I wanted. I go, secretly, you know you're not worthy of it. Mm. That's true. That is true. Yeah. You, you don't even deserve to ask for it yet. Yeah. You're like, I, I, that's why, have you, I don't, I don't know what your money situation has been your whole life, but I was in a situation uh, for many years growing up where if I would have to check the inquiry on the balance before I pulled money out of the ATM mm -hmm. and it's like, uh, shit, dude, I, I need 60 bucks, but do I have 38 bucks in there? Do I have 52? Do I have 64? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, and so yeah. I was afraid to make a withdrawal. And a lot of guys are afraid to ask for sex. That same feeling of making the withdrawal, like, I don't know what's in there. A lot of guys have a hard time asking for sex because Deep down, they know I've made no deposits into this woman. Right. And so now I'm just showing up with take your energy. Like, hey, do you think I could get lucky? And it is luck because there's no skill. <laughs> yeah. And there's no earned trust or desire there. Maybe that's where the phrase came from. It has to be, dude. <laughs> it's but, just like. But what a disempowering <laughs> phrase, right? I hope yeah. I get lucky. Oh, yeah. I, anyway, I could go on for hours. I appreciate you having me on, man. And I, 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 I appreciate your boldness and who you are and what yeah. you've done. And. I asked a friend of mine, he's got a very large men's movement and a very large men's podcast. I saw him just yesterday. And I said, what's the one piece of advice that you would give anybody starting a podcast? Or I'm just curious, what did you learn in all these years of building this pretty massive movement? And he said, be authentic. Mm. And when we were at Joe Rogan's comedy, they make you put your phones in the bag. So this guy and his buddies are going off on woke culture. Yeah. Because nobody's recording them. And I said, I leaned more in for that hour of Joe Rogan talking and doing his stuff than I've ever listened on any of his podcasts. Cause I'm like, this is what he really believes. Mm. We love to know what people really believe. What we, well, we love to know that people are bold enough to say what they really believe. Dude, you've been a great example of that, man. Like genuinely. Yeah. So, I appreciate well it. Done, so if anyone wants to get connected with you and improve the married game, how do they do it? Marriedgame.com. There's a, they can opt in. I got it. My, I gotta, I'm going to brag. My emails are amazing <laughs> because they're really like, Hey, you're struggling with this. And everyone's like, yeah, that's what I'm struggling with. So marygame.com. I got a video there that explains, uh, if they want to chat with me, they can actually chat with me. I don't have a sales team anymore. <laughs> uh, I, I, I actually did away with that and wow. for very conscious reasons. Um, and, um, cause I like talking to the people. Cool. Yeah. I so they got, or they can follow me at, at Keith Yak at Instagram. Keith Yak at Instagram guys. Yeah. Check them out. Check Married Game out. And uh, as always, make sure you subscribe to this podcast, and I'll see you on the next one.
Peace. A lot of people don't even really know what the War Room is. Not only is it the greatest network in the world, but it's also like a finishing school for a man to fully develop. You know, we talk about style, stocks, making money, your relationship with your girl. Most people believe 